Joining me right now is Ohio Congressman Warren Davidson. He is a member of the Financial Services Committee. And, Congressman, it's great to have you. I want to get into financial services in a second, given this huge week and month that we are looking at with the Federal Reserve raising rates. But first, give us your take on the border and what's about to happen when Title 42 goes away. Well, just even when we use the language, you know, migrants, dr migrants uh, crossing the river carrying drugs, they're not migrants, they're drug traffickers. They're carrying drugs across mm -hmm. our border. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the leading cause of death for 18 to 45 year olds is fatal drug overdoses, overwhelmingly fentanyl, you know, over 70,000 killed with this poison. Uh, you know, the drugs are bad already, but now they're being poisoned with fentanyl. Yeah. And people are, are, are really paying big consequences right here in Ohio because we're not securing our border. And we have to we have well, to separate I mean, uh, immigration yeah. from border security. That's right. It's a good point because we have an immigration structure in place. We issue one million green cards a year, uh, but these people are jumping ahead of the line. We just showed a graphic, Congressman, of the number of people coming into this country is more than major cities so far. Under Biden, you've got more people coming into this country in terms of population than the entire city of Austin, the entire city of San Francisco. Same with Miami. It's quite extraordinary. What's the impact here? I mean, is this for is it an impact on jobs, services, resources? What is your take in terms of how this plays out? Well, if you want to fundamentally remake America, you can do it with massive demographic change. And when you look, you know, as a consequence of uh, all of the non-citizens being counted, you know, President Trump tried hard to say when we draw our congressional maps, we should count citizens. Uh, and, and California has five to seven extra congressional seats just by counting non-citizens. Ohio continues to lose out. We lost another seat. We would actually gain a seat if we only counted citizens for apportionment. But that changes in terms of the demographic makeup of Congress. You know, heavily, there's over 500,000 um, people who were caught by our Border Patrol at the border, over 500,000 delivered to the sanctuary city of their choice all around America. Uh, and, and at the previous, they've halted deportations at the previous rate of less than 5,000 per month. It would take 14 years just to deport the 500,000 plus that have been brought into the country uh, this year in violation of our laws. We have to get control of this Biden administration and turn this off. Yeah, I mean, let me just point out that under President Trump, border encounters were at a 20-year low. Now we're at a 22-year high. I want to get your take on uh, the, uh, the the situation in Ukraine as well. Former Director of National Intelligence John Ratcliffe joined me yesterday on Sunday Morning Futures to discuss uh, the recent meeting uh, where we saw Blinken and Austin go meet with Zelensky. Here's John Ratcliffe. Got to get your take. Watch. This invasion started February 24th, and only two days into the invasion, um, the Biden administration encouraged Vol uh, Volodymyr Zelensky to do what they did in Afghanistan, to, to, to leave the country. And had he done that, uh, Vladimir Putin would have gotten the quick victory that he wanted. So, you know, fortunately for Zelensky and the Ukrainians, they didn't take the Biden administration advice because the Biden administration, there's a difference between helping Ukraine and helping Ukraine to win. So, so what about that? Is this administration looking for a Ukraine win or do they not care either way after all of the death and destruction we've seen? Well, I think at this point they're looking for a Ukraine win. They're riding on some strength. I mean, President Zelensky inspired really the world. I mean, it, you know, thank goodness he said, yeah, I don't need a ride. I need ammunition and rallied support. But, you know, I think the concern is, is now Joe Biden's ready to go piggyback off of that and push him over the top. Um, you know, America is, you know, rooting for Ukraine to succeed. They, of course, have a right to self-defense and self-determination. And Americans, I think, yeah. broadly are enthusiastic about being supportive of that. We should be clear, and I'm not sure that Lloyd Austin was, this is not our war to fight. OK, yeah, th that's that that's a good point. I understand where you're going. I know America would like Ukraine to win. What I was referring to is the, does the White House uh, or is the White House is still uh, waiting to see a Putin victory, given the fact that we're working with Putin. They're negotiating on our behalf for the Iran deal. But look, your committee, Financial Services Committee, do you expect a recession? Do you think the Federal Reserve is going to have a soft landing here? A and, and what about COVID? The White House is contradicting Dr. 
Dr. Anthony Fauci after saying that the mask mandates are not an issue for the courts. Here's Fauci. Listen to this. Obviously, the judiciary has an important role to play. Um, what, I, what you heard out of the administration, out of the Department of Justice, was, was the assessment that this, this was a, uh, a, an incorrect decision, and the DOJ is now appealing that decision. Uh, that was that was uh, the uh, the commentary about the White House appealing this mask decision, Congressman. Yeah, I mean, I'm one of 16 members of Congress that's a party to a lawsuit. We're trying to, you know, frankly, join the same kind of uh, lawsuit that that worked out in Florida. You know, the judge didn't render a medical opinion about masks. Uh, the judge rendered an opinion on the law, which is the CDC does not have the legal authority uh, to impose this. And frankly, then TSA doesn't have the legal authority to enforce it. Um, we need to win on this point of law. And I think it should be clear. Frankly, I'm disappointed that all members of Congress aren't united in saying this is not power we gave away to the CDC. And I think the people should know that they have a representative in Congress. And whether your representative believes yes or no, you should be masked when you ride a plane. Uh, we should call a recorded yeah. vote and do it that way. That's the system we have. We don't have systems like, you know, Tony Fauci uh, imposing his will on the country f since 1984. Uh, we have to rein folks yeah. like that in. And I think Tony's in for a rough stretch in 2023. What do you mean? Why? Uh, there's going to be a lot of oversight. I believe Republicans are going to take back the House. And whether he resigns, is fired, or you know flees the country, I think he's going to be subpoenaed, and he's going to testify under oath for a lot. He's going to have to give an account for a lot of things. And frankly, when you look at making over CDC and NIH, yeah, uh, this is long overdue, and this has to be a, a, an integral part of the 2023 budgeting process. All right, real quick before you go, we only have a couple of seconds here, Congressman. The market is down 306 points. There is serious worry about growth slowing down. Are you expecting a recession in 22? Look, uh, I, I helped create the Sound Money Caucus in July of 2020 uh, because we knew this was not going to be transitory. We knew that inflation would result. Um, most of us have called on, on the Fed to stop their intervention, their economic distortions, since September of 2021. Uh, so at this point, I think they're going to be, you know, instead of being able to apply the brakes gently, they're trying to slam them on. Uh, that's like trying to st slam on the brakes on ice. Uh, so it's it's going to be very tricky for them to come in soft. I think they've waited a little too long and they're, they don't have as much um, uh, flexibility as they're really going to need to do it smoothly. All right. Looks like investors agree with you this morning, Congressman. It's good to see you. Thanks very much. And we'll check back soon. Congressman Warren Davidson joining us this morning. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Maria. We'll be right back.